Hello everybody, I'm Professor Atul Pathak, uh, cardiologist in Monaco, head of department. And uh, we are today uh, with my colleague and friend, uh, Professor Sophie Brewers, who is cardiologist in Alst and professor at the University of Brussels. And uh, we are going today to uh, deal with the uh, major hotline, which are the new guidelines uh, regarding the management of a patient with elevated blood pressure and not hypertension. And so maybe my first question for you, Sophie, is uh, what are your key messages uh, for our audience? I think uh, what is indeed, as you just said, is very important is that the title of the guidelines uh, changed. And why is it? It is because actually high blood pressure and especially the cardiovascular disease risk that is attributable to an increase in blood pressure is actually a continuum. And so we cannot say it's only from this or this blood pressure. So there's like three new categories. We have a non-elevated blood pressure. We have the category of a non of elevated blood pressure. So from 120 to 139 is the, uh, the elevated blood pressure. And then the definition of hypertension stays the same. So it uh, still remains from 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury. So one key so. message, a new definition with this new Elevated blood pressure. Uh, any other important messages? Yes, so I think for uh, this, uh, this was also created because in these group of patients with the elevated blood pressure, actually uh, there's more emphasis on cardiovascular disease risk calculation. So in these patients, whenever they have established cardiovascular disease, we need to be careful and start treating them early on, first with lifestyles for uh, three months. And then afterwards, whenever the blood pressure remains above 130 over 80, we start pharmacological therapy. So this is lower than before because they have an increased risk. If there is not a clearly um, uh, established cardiovascular disease, then we need to do the risk calculations. So this is, uh, I think, a very important I think it's uh, important now that it's not only blood pressure driven, but also risk driven. Risk driven, indeed. Are there uh, other things that uh, you found very striking? Yeah, I think uh, maybe uh, to add uh, the, the target. Yes. So I think that the target has been uh, reset with the objective of going between 120 and 129. So I think this is a very strong message. Yeah. Uh, and maybe also the concept of uh, the personalized treatment. If you're not yeah. able to reach the target because of side effects, because yes. of frailty, then you go as low as possible yes. if, if acceptable. Yeah, indeed. So that's very important that there's a, a differentiation uh, in there. Uh, that's, uh, that's true. And if we move uh, to the other spectrum, what are your takes regarding uh, resistant hypertension? Yeah, so I think uh, it's very clear that the treatment didn't change compared to the previous guidelines from 2018. So there's, of course, lifestyle first on and always. Then there's the pharmacological therapy with a triple combination, a RAS uh, blocker, a uh, CCB, and then a diuretic, thiazide or thiazide like diuretic, first starting in low dose combination therapy, up titrating and in a single pill combination. And then for the resistant hypertension, so there's actually a couple options. So there's spironolactone, if you say in the pharmacological team, you can add a vasodilating beta blocker if it is not already on board because of uh, compelling um, indications. And then of course, uh, renal denervation, which got an upgrade, which is very obvious. Um, yeah, I, think I think you agree. This is, this is nice. I think one, maybe also the option of epirenon if you are not True. able to deal with spironolactone. And then I think you have great regarding uh, renal denervation. So uh, in your opinion and according to these guidelines, uh, who would be the ideal candidate for renal denervation? Yeah, I think renal denervation, obviously with all the data we now have available, got the, uh, the, the upgrade. And I think there's two ways to go. So you have the resistant hypertensive, and hypertensive patient where you uh, increase the pharmacological therapy with more medication. But there's also a recommendation that whenever you do not um, get to the targets with the triple combination uh, uh, therapy, that you can discuss with the patient and look into the patient preference. Because I think we're getting um, more and more into that uh, discussion and patients are very vocal. So we need to have it uh, discussed yeah, with them. How do you do that? Yeah, I think this is about the point, the ecosystem. So yeah, one, uh, emphasizing that the renal denervation needs to be performed in a center which is used to that regarding volumes, techniques, environment. Yes. And second, as you mentioned, patient preferences. So yes. try to share with the patient your thoughts, try to listen to the patient, yes. try to see what is uh, the, the best option available for him, yeah. uh, increasing the dosage, adding a drug, or offering him uh, renal denervation. Yeah, indeed. Is there something that uh, you will take home to your department and uh, tell your colleagues uh, on what has changed? Yeah, I think uh, maybe the, uh, the lifestyle with the emphasis on sure. sodium, but also potassium. I mm -hmm. think this is very interesting. Yes. 
Second, maybe also the message about frailty, mm -hmm. taking into account these patients who are getting older and who are sometimes struggling. And what I also liked was that uh, throughout the guidelines, the gender issue has always been pointed out. And maybe this is a word that I would like to, uh, for you to emphasize uh, as a concluding remark. What are your thoughts about this gender approach, which is quite original. It's not a specific section, yes. but it's gender throughout, throughout the document. I think it's very important to have it throughout the document. There are not enough studies to really change the cut of values for females and for males, but we have to take into account that females do react differently to medication, to dosing. The side effects are different. Complaints can be different, they can be more symptomatic. And that the blood pressure targets now going um, more deeper, actually going lower, actually for women having a physiological blood pressure that is lower, it uh, might be very important. And we tend to undertreat women. And I think this guideline also emphasizes that we need to be careful and, uh, and differentiate between males and females. So that's an important uh, message so, indeed. To summarize, new patients. Yes. New targets. Yes. New devices. Yes. I think we're all set. Thank yeah. you very much, Professor Boas. Thank you very much for the nice interview.